In our previous video, we learned of one of the most significant psychological symptoms we may experience, sadness and depression. We learned that there are two types of sadness, and for it, there are external and internal modes of treatment. We also learned that experiencing times of sadness and grief are part of the nature of this world, but that we can combat it with having a positive mindset to the challenging times that we face, strengthened by Allah Ta'ala's promise and love for those who trust in Him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as we endure the trials and tribulations of this world. In this video, we'll be looking at the mental maneuver Al Imam Al Balqi Taala offers to strengthen our resolve in experiences that cause sadness and put our souls at risk for depression. Al Imam Al Balqi Taala emphasizes the practice of disciplined endurance until it becomes a second nature to a person. He urges individuals to train oneself to cultivate patience and resilience in the face of adversity. His first tip is that one facing a saddening event should ask himself whether he would want to be like the cowards or whether he should model himself after glorified heroes. He distinguishes between the coward, one who succumbs to despair, and the glorified heroes who confront challenging times with unwavering fortitude. Fasbir sabran jamila. Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and be patient, a beautiful patience. He encourages individuals to look to these glorified heroes who endure trials with beautiful patience and to model themselves after them. And what better model than the Prophet Sallallahu the prophets are the most tested of humans والسلام, and we should look to them to see how they reacted in these times. Studying the life of the Prophet وسلم, alone is something everyone should try and do. And they will see very clearly that the Prophet وسلم, during times of hardship and sadness always stayed patient and remained thankful to Allah His second tip is to recognize the significance of one's soul. He notes that one's soul, or self, should be and is in fact the most precious thing that one has and that one should preserve and protect it. If it is safe, then any other law should be comparatively less disturbing and tolerable. Al Imam al Balqi advocates that the preservation of the strength of the soul should be among our highest priorities. An interesting comment he notes here is on the importance of social support. He says that it is one of the characteristics of human nature to find solace in one's hardship when one discovers that it, sh that it is shared by many other people, meaning that you are not alone in the hardships you endure. Everyone is going through something. Whether you can see it, whether you can't see it, whether you know about it or whether you don't, no matter how they handle it, every single person is fighting their own battles. But what this focus on social support reminds us of is the concept of collective trauma along with collective healing, which many of us can relate to right now. As we witness our beloved Ummah, those who we share our identities, values, and experiences with, undergoing a genocide, yet their suffering is neglected. We find that we are together in this distress, that we are moved at the same time by communal solidarity to heal us from this trauma we are experiencing and to prevent unchecked grief. Imam al-Balqi Ta'ala's third tip is contextualizing our suffering. Ponder on reducing the effects of the calamity that is afflicting one by realizing that it could have been much, much more depressive and agonizing. This again relates to gratitude to Allah for averting greater catastrophes and for being given a lighter misfortune. Further relating to this, he urges individuals to have expectations of future pleasures, a mindset that can help soothe a depressive mood and foster a sense of contentment with, one, with what one is going through now. This relates to a concept we've previously discussed, which is that sabrun jameel, beautiful patience, is something that allows even in the midst of calamity for us to see beauty. Lastly, Al Imam Al Balqi Taala ends with reminding a person that sadness does not last forever, that it is destined to fade with time. He shares that by serving one's own 
as well as others' experiences, one will come to the realization that every incident of sorrow ends, and every grief that is destined, destined for you and I will also pass. And every chapter of sadness and trials and tribulations will be a part of us that comes and a part of us that goes. How many times have we been in positions where we've thought that we just can't take it anymore? Yet when we reflect back on those times, we see that in fact, we did make it through. And what seemed like the end of the world then, in fact, wasn't. And Imam Al-Balqi suggests that employing the mental maneuvers we've discussed in this video will bring us feelings of comfort and is a holistic approach to navigate adversity with endurance, gratitude, resilience, and most importantly, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This experience is by the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who promises us that he will not test us with more than we can bear. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها And lastly, as, I, as we end, and lastly, as we end, I would like to reflect on the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that many can benefit from right now. While many of us may feel the grief from the hardships of this world, catching up to us while others live as if nothing is happening and find solace in knowing that the pain we are experiencing is not a lasting pain and that with patience and endurance, we will come out as the happiest. It was reported by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said the most privileged people in the world who tasted all of its sweetness and all of its beauty, those who were written from the hellfire come on the day of judgment and they are dipped in the hellfire. Then it will be said to them, O son of Adam, did you see any good? Did you get any blessings in this world? And they will say, no, by Allah, we did not. Then the most miserable people in the world, those who were tested the most, those that were deprived the most, those that faced the most calamities, trials, and tribulations from amongst those who are written for Jannah. They will be taken and they will be dipped into Jannah. And it will be said to them, O son of Adam, did you see any hardship in your life? Did you face any distress, any difficulties? And these people who had the most challenging and difficult of lives, they will say, no Allah, my Lord, I did not see any hardship nor distress. Just by one dip into the gardens of Jannah, every pain that you've been through, every moment of sadness and anxiety will be erased like it never even happened.